Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to cover voltage controlled oscillator that is nothing but VCO. VCO is very important topic. VCO is used in PLL, phase locked loop. So in order to understand PLL, you should have a basic understanding of what is voltage controlled oscillator. Okay. So from exam point of view, you will get questions like uh, drop log diagram of IC 566. Okay, so this IC is very important from exam point of view. We will cover the pin diagram, block diagram of this IC as well as the basic concept of VCO. Okay, let's see the concept first. So what is VCO? Okay, name is self-explanatory. It is an oscillator whose frequency will be controlled by its input voltage. Okay, we know that oscillators generate different kinds of waveforms. So the frequency of these waveforms will be controlled by input voltage. Okay. This is what VCO does. But how? We are going to find the answer of this how. We are going to see quickly what is exactly the principle of VCO. So as I said, if you increase V in, frequency will increase. Okay. Frequency of your output waveform. And if you decrease the input voltage, frequency will also decrease. But how? You must be knowing these equations of frequency 1 upon 2 pi RC or frequency equal to 1 upon 2 pi root LC. Okay. If you see here, frequency is inversely proportional to this C. Okay. C is in the denominator. So if you decrease the C capacitance, your frequency will increase. And if you increase the capacitance, your frequency will decrease because they are inversely proportional. So in normal standard oscillators, we do this, we tune the capacitor, we increase, decrease the value in order to tune our frequency. Okay. That's how we get a control of frequency. So this is kind of manual operation, like you have to tune the capacitor manually. So that's how VCO comes in the picture. VCO gets rid of this manual tuning. Okay. It automates this part. It automates the increase and decrease in the capacitance by increase and decrease in the V in, input voltage. I hope you are following me. Once we change the input voltage, it will change the value of C. So V in is inversely proportional to C. Okay. And now you must be thinking how and why. Okay. What is the relationship between input voltage and capacitance? So we want to vary the capacitor. So for that purpose, we need a variable capacitor. So they call it vary cap also. Okay. Or there is a vector diode. So if you have reversed bias this vector diode. So in such configuration, this diode will act as a capacitor. Okay. Means as it is reversed bias, there will be a depletion region formed. Right. So this P terminal will act as a plate. And this N terminal will act as a second plate. Okay, so this is acting as a capacitor and this depletion region is acting as a dielectric of capacitor. Okay, so this is like a capacitor. Now, if you increase this reverse bias, so this is like our input voltage. Okay, so if you increase the input voltage, the depletion region is going to expand. So if this distance increases, the capacitance decreases. Okay, so if you increase the input voltage, the width of depletion region will increase. And if this D means distance between these two plates, if this distance is increased, then the value of capacitance will decrease. And if this C decreases, this F increases. So we increased V in and our frequency is increased. So you can see V in is directly proportional to frequency. Okay. Similarly, if you decrease the input voltage, this region will be smaller. Okay, so the distance between two plates is going to decrease and it will increase the value of capacitance. So if C is increased, frequency will decrease. So V in is directly proportional to frequency. So here we did this part without touching capacitor. We control the value of C by controlling V in. So now the concept is clear. Okay. So as you will increase your input voltage, that is nothing but control voltage. Okay. Your frequency will also increase. So the graph is going to be linear. Okay. So there are two types of VCO. 
linear vco and relaxation type vco okay so in linear vcos your output is sine wave and in relaxation type your output is saw tooth or triangular in linear vco there is triangle circuit inside it they have used varactor the diode which we saw now they reverse bias it and they use it as a capacitor okay and then there is a amplifier to boost up that output and in other type in relaxation type they control the frequency by charging and discharging of capacitor okay if the capacitor is charging slowly the frequency will be decreased and if the capacitor is charging rapidly and discharging rapidly the frequency will be more okay so in that way they control the output frequency there they use active element like ujt put or they use the ic lm566 or any 566 okay so we are going to see this ic now before that let's see some applications of vco vco is used in frequency modulator pulse modulator then pll then variable frequency generator tone generator clock generator and it will generate a square wave so it will be useful for many applications okay so now we are going to study ic566 so it can be lm566 or any 566 okay both are vco ic's voltage control oscillators okay so this ic will give you square wave and triangular wave okay so we are going to see the pin diagram of it and then we will see the detail working so let's see the pin diagram of 566 okay this is the 8 pin ic first pin is ground second pin is nc not connected anywhere reserved for the future use then third pin we are getting square wave output and fourth pin we are getting triangular wave output then fifth pin we are giving the control voltage or modulation voltage okay and then there are two external components one resistor and one capacitor okay we call them timing capacitor or timing resistor because they play role in frequency control okay these three things define your output frequency okay then this is the block diagram of ic566 okay now pay attention you need to listen my explanation till the end to understand this block diagram okay so this red square is your ic so these are external components r1 c1 and everything else is inside the ic so we will be providing the control voltage means input voltage okay and this is relaxation type of oscillator so it will change the output frequency by charging discharging of capacitor if we increase and decrease the input voltage this will control the amount of current this current source will supply or sink okay so this control voltage is the input to this constant current source okay so this current source is going to supply a particular amount of current which will charge this capacitor so if you provide more current it will charge rapidly okay and it will also act as a current sink okay it will absorb the error so the capacitor will discharge now that capacitor is charging discharging is collected here through this buffer okay at this point and this is available as a output a triangular wave is available at a output so basically there are three amplifiers one is buffer second is smith trigger and third is inverter so the capacitor voltage you are collecting it through this buffer okay. by this path you are collecting at output and you are also feeding it to the another op amp that is smith trigger okay and the output of smith trigger will be inverted by this inverter and you will get a square wave at the output okay now we will see quickly how does this smith trigger produce square wave so you must be familiar with the smith trigger but uh, let me brush up some things so smith trigger has a positive feedback okay so it is in the saturation region so it will operate only in two levels v sat and plus v sat so here you have given power supply of vcc so it is going to operate between vcc and 0.5 vcc okay and why 0.5 here ra is going to be equal to rb okay these two resistors if we assume equal okay if you apply vdr at this point okay rb upon ra plus rb into power supply okay so if these two resistors are same this factor will come out as half okay so half vcc means 0.5 vcc the output of smith trigger is going to oscillate between these two levels 
So the Schmidt trigger waveform, you can see it is oscillating between VCC and 0.5 VCC. Now when the output is VCC, the capacitor is charging towards VCC. Okay. If you see here, capacitor is charging towards VCC, but it will not reach till VCC. Okay. Because if you see, this is the reference voltage. Okay. This is the reference voltage. Basically, Smith trigger is comparing this reference voltage with your capacitor voltage. Okay. So at this node, 0.5 VCC is available. Okay. Just now we saw as RA and RB are equal, the voltage at this point is 0.5 VCC. So the Smith trigger is going to compare the voltage at this point with the 0.5 VCC. So when capacitor voltage will reach to this threshold value 0.5 VCC, okay, then the output of Smith trigger will be switched. So it was charging, okay, then at this point it reached to 0.5 VCC. At this point output flipped to 0.5 VCC, output turned low, okay. Now the output is 0.5 VCC and this feedback voltage, this reference voltage is also going to be changed because when the output was VCC, you got half of it as a threshold voltage. Okay. Now this is your output. So you will get half of it as a threshold voltage. That is nothing but 0.25 VCC. The output is 0.5 VCC and threshold voltage or reference voltage is 0.25 VCC. Now again, the capacitor is discharging. Okay. Now the current is sinking. Capacitor's voltage is dropping. Same voltage is getting compared with the 0.25 VCC. Okay. So when voltage at this point, when capacitor voltage will reach to 0.25 VCC, okay, means it will try to cross this threshold, then again the output will get switched. Output will be flipped to high again, okay. So as you can see, capacitor was discharging, but at this point, it reached to threshold 0.25 VCC. So the Smith trigger output is again turned high, okay. So the cycle is going to be repeated. You are going to get a square wave, which is going to be inverted by this inverter. Okay. So this inverter will invert the output. So the square wave will be like this. It will just convert the high state into low state and low state into high state. So that's how it is working. Okay. So I hope the block diagram is quite clear now. Then there is one important equation for VCO. The frequency is 2.4 VCC into VC. VC is nothing but control voltage upon R1 C1 VCC. Okay. So this is the equation of your frequency of output. Okay. So we covered everything. We covered block diagram. We covered waveforms, pin diagram. Then we covered the basic concept of frequency control, basic concept of VCO. Okay. So we covered everything. And I hope you have understood everything. So if you have liked this video, hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.